George Fox is with us. We continue our conversation. Listening to that song that you, you know, dedicate mm -hmm. to your to your mother. You really are a family guy. I mean, that's really important to you. Yeah, that's true. I think, uh, uh, and I'm I'm happy that I am. I mean, you sort of are your a product of your environment, yeah. and yeah. Uh, I was taught a lot of good lessons. And you know, people uh, they assume what you're singing about is what you're living in your life and especially in country music yeah. and uh, so you know you, you you just know that uh, when you express something like that that it's hopefully going to touch people and I think that sentiment is a good one it's uh, uh, you know about your parents and I mean mm -hmm. values and stuff so it's pretty satisfying to, to, to write those kind of a wedding song or whatever yeah. that you know people are gonna now your dad uh, Bert is still in Cochrane right Alberta what does he yeah. think of you anyway in taking up music as a living? Oh, he's, he's more interested in what kind of corn crop I got in Ontario. <laughs> he, he's, he's, he was down there a month ago and he, he made me measure off a stick so he could go out and see that we had 12 foot corn. Yeah. And that was, to him, that's better than a number one record, I'm sure. <laughs> but I, yeah, I think he's, he's uh, both him and mom got a chance to do some pretty interesting things yeah. with the country music awards you know yeah. i hosted that and concerts meeting ann murray and so they i think they really have enjoyed the the years some of the perks business. that come with that has it been odd for you to deal with this i mean you the the big break you had with the opening for randy travis and then mm -hmm. it's been on a stage with anybody you can name i mean dolly parton and all the greats and right and and stardom in your own right at this point there, there's a huge change there yeah, well, that's right. I mean, I've had a chance to do some great things. I'm, uh, the traveling and, and stuff I really enjoy. But uh, no, I, I'm really the same person. I, I don't think that I've, uh, uh, I've, it's affected me, I, I guess, because, you know, I got kicked by a lot of cows and know what it's like <laughs> to have to, you know, really get out there, work hard manually for a living. And uh, uh, the thing that I've, you know, it's such a competitive business yeah. as we were talking yeah. earlier that uh, you got to really learn the hardest thing for me was to s create and not compete because you always have a tendency to project the success into a, something better and uh, you, you know you can really get uh, caught up in that yeah not enjoy what's happening yeah. so I, I you know we do a lot of touring in small places we take a just myself and a couple other musicians yeah. we go into where the real country fans are and, and go back to sort of the roots and and uh you, you have a tendency to to uh stay more unaffected that way i think yeah. who's affected you the most in terms of your music or who you've met i mean was there somebody that george fox went oh wow i never believed i'd be in the same room with yeah, I th you know, that's the thing. I remember uh, one year when I won a Juno Award, we sat after the show. I think you got 16 of them, didn't you? <laughs> yeah. Well, I <laughs> one weighed... year when I won a Juno Award. Yeah, I've been really lucky with uh, my timing's been good. And uh, I think I have about 50 pounds of awards. Wow. But uh, we had a... Warner Music had a party after... I forget what year it was, but I, I remember... Quincy Jones was over here. Rod Stewart was over here. We were eating lobster, <laughs> and uh, I'll tell you that was I was black and blue from pinching myself that night. But uh, yeah, there there's a lot of rewards in this business yeah. for sure. And uh, uh, but you know the biggest ones are you know somebody who uh, you know you know their song your song played at their wedding and their 25th yeah. will come around and they'll probably dig Play out that again. record again yeah so. some kid comes running up to you and says didn't this happen with uh i give you my vow somebody some young kid came up to you and said we're going to play this. oh yeah. yeah yeah in a coffee shop yeah. he had the engagement ring he, and uh boy i'll tell you it was <laughs> it was pretty neat to, yeah that's the real tribute isn't it yeah absolutely all right, now it's time for confession. We know you're a happily married man. Mm -hmm. We've heard all about that. But you have dated a prime minister. Yeah, one of the few men, I think, that have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's right. Kim Campbell, this yeah. was an odd circumstance. Kind of called you up and asked you out, or at least her office did. That's right, yeah. It was, uh, well, just before she had announced her candidacy. Right. And... Uh, she needed a, a date for the Juno. She wanted to go to the Juno. So we sort of had mutual friends. And I was out in, in Vancouver 
uh, it was the most expensive date I was ever on in my life because I had to buy an airfare and everything at short notice. But it was a real, uh, we had a great time. And, uh, uh, you know, I thought at that time she was really the, the queen, you know, she was so, so much attention. Yeah. And it was really interesting to see. But I, uh, I haven't really kept in touch with her too much. Um, Did you send her all your CDs? Oh, yeah. yeah. She, uh, she uh, I think she, we sort of kept in touch a little bit afterwards. Because there was, when she actually made the announcement that she was going to seek the top job, mm -hmm. didn't she, wasn't the music as she walked onto the podium, clearly Canadian? That's right, yeah. That was part of it. So, uh, no, it was, uh, it was really a, a good experience. I mean, I, I can't say that I... Uh, really picked a winner, but <laughs> <laughs> no, no kidding. No offense to her, but uh, no, it was it was good fun. <laughs> <laughs> there are those moments like that, and and I remember reading at one point Tommy Hunter sort of introducing you at some point. This was early on, kind of saying, you know, this this young lad has not a oh, bad right. voice. I mean, you've met all of those guys too, who are country music in this country. Yeah, well, you mentioned Tommy Hunter. I remember the first time I was on his show I went run. I was so nervous and he says here's a young fellow from Alberta sings real good and I went running down there so fast I fell over right beside Don and Leroy and, uh, and I was I was on front page challenge Were you? and uh, the closest they got was Katie Lang trying to guess me <laughs> <laughs> you stumped I, them I hope they thought I was disguising my voice but uh, yeah that was very early on in my career and, but you're right. I mean, as a kid growing up, seeing those yeah. shows to get on those uh, yeah. was a real, real thrill. I mean, I'd rather get on Tommy Hunter than David Letterman, to be honest yeah, with you. Yeah, no, that's right. And uh, so, yeah, the story continues. And you, uh, <laughs> I find in, this, in, in Canada, you really, as an artist, it's just as important to be, have your identity. People know me as that, the, the rancher from Alberta that, yeah. you know, and as they probably couldn't name a you know more than a couple of my songs but they know of me and uh and they know you didn't get too big for your britches yeah well not yet not yet you might <laughs> it might go to your head yet i you said that to really have made it in this business one of your songs would have to be on a karaoke machine <laughs> yeah right <laughs> is that just so you could make oh, some really gosh. good money <laughs> well uh yeah, I mean karaoke. That's the, that's. The, I mean, how good can you get? But I, uh, uh, yeah, I don't think I really. Very few artists, are, you know, have the signature song that that goes on and on, and it's uh, it's it's hard to get one like that, especially nowadays when everything's so formatted. But uh, uh, you know, I, I'm still working on it. What's your favorite so far? Uh, Actually, I've got a song called Here's Hoping There'll Always Be a Cowboy that's a song about my dad I wrote for his 75th birthday. And it, it, every time I sing it, it takes me right back to the life we had on the ranch. And it, uh, it pays tribute to him, too. So I love it when a song is just like a... Uh, it's something you just crawl right into, and uh, it's, it's like a little mini-movie, and yeah, I get to experience it. comfortable. Yeah. Such a pleasure to have you with us. Oh, thank so you, nice Pamela. to see you. And oh. your best, uh, my best to your dad. Uh, you say Oh, hi, yeah, Bert. he'll be thrilled. <laughs> <laughs> hi, Bert. <laughs> all right, I hope we'll see you soon and all the best. Thanks very much. We're going to take a little listen to some George Fox as we say goodnight. 